What's going on, Connect Church family? Um, it's an honor to talk with you guys tonight. Pastor Stephen asked me last week if I would take some time uh, tonight to share with you guys what's on my heart, and I thought it was an honor and a privilege. So thank you, Pastor Stephen, for asking, and I ask you guys to bear with me as I go through some notes and some scriptures here. Uh, I promise it won't be too painful, and I hope it won't be too long either. I'm going to try to keep it within a short amount of time. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just jump on into um, to what's on my heart. Uh, and I'm going to talk, tell y'all first, I'm going to share with y'all a little bit about me that you might not know. Um, so a while back, I've been married for about 15 years, and when I got married, I was in what I'll call decent shape. I wasn't in the best shape in the world, but I was in I would say decent shape. Um, I got married. Uh, we had a we had a kid, and because of stress of life and just what happens, and the fact that I like to eat, my health was affected. I started gaining weight, and um, what's crazy is I didn't even know it. Right? Um, I was at my cousin's wedding, and my uncle came up to me that I haven't seen in a while. And he goes, "Hey, man, um, what happened?" And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, bro, you're fat. And it really kind of caught me off guard because, um, like I said, when I was when we were first starting off live together with Michelle and I, you know, um, it's it sometimes is a struggle, you know, when you when you're dealing with uh, a stressful job and trying to figure out what it looks like to uh, to live with another person. Then you add a baby in the mix and stress. Like I said, I would turn to food more than I should. And so it was just one of those things that I didn't even realize it was to where it was at. Um, so I, uh, I went home after the wedding and I started doing some research on uh, what I needed to do to get back into shape. Um, and I found a lot of good information. And one of the things that was always like the very basic foundation of trying to get into shape when you're out of shape is to start tracking everything that you eat and drink. This is not a, a fun thing that anybody likes to do, but it's very vital and important because what it does, um, well, let me explain, right? So I start kind of going through everything that I will call unhealthy Aaron was eating, and I found out unhealthy Aaron loves sugar. I have a horrible sweet tooth. Even to this day, I have to fight it. I was uh, at Walmart the other day after I went to the gym, and I was texting Pastor Steven, and I told him, I said, I made a mistake. I'm at Walmart, I haven't eaten all day, I already worked out, and I'm hungry, and I'm shopping for healthy food. And I'm looking at ice cream and cookies going, oh, I need your help, Jesus. <laughs> but I like that's what I love. I still love it. But that's what I was eating. I, would, I, I mean, fast food, uh, sweets, pizza. Um, what healthy Aaron needed was good food. So I started seeing what caused me to become unhealthy Aaron. And I saw what I needed to do to become healthy Aaron. I needed to stop doing this and start doing this to become what I wanted to be, what I needed to be. Um, so this leads me to point one, okay? Keep track of who you are feeding. So if you heard, I kind of made two different people in that last part of who I was. I had fat me and healthy me or unhealthy me and healthy me. Um, so you might ask, well, what does this have to do with our walk with God or our spiritual life? Um, tracking food allowed me to see how I got to where I was and what I needed to do to change in order to become what I needed to be. I feel like in our spiritual walk sometimes um, we find ourselves in a place um, whether it's spiritually, mentally, emotionally, uh, acting in a way or becoming uh, something that we do not need to be. Maybe it's an issue with anger. You start realizing, man, I have just been angry lately. Or maybe it's unforgiveness like what Pastor Stephen talked about this last week. Or maybe it's an issue with sin that you're really struggling with and you don't realize until you're sometimes in it that it's now something that you have to get out of. Um, so what we have to do is identify, and it, and, it, and it was weird because I was talking to God about keeping track of my calories and my food, and he's like, you know, you, if you want to get a good pulse of where you are at and how you got there, you can do the same thing with your spiritual walk. 
And it really kind of was one of those things like a, a no dub, but at the same time, it was like, oh, wow, that's true. If we want to have a closer, more intimate relationship with God, if we look back and see who we are feeding. Now, again, I was talking about healthy Aaron and, and unhealthy Aaron. When it comes to spiritual, that goes to flesh and spirit, still a part of the same thing. But I heard somebody say, it was a quote, and I, and I tried finding the, the, the person who quoted it, I couldn't find it, but it said, what we feed grows and what we starve dies. So I had to starve unhealthy Aaron from the stuff that he wanted, and I had to feed healthy Aaron the things that he needed so he could be strong and grow. Same thing spiritually. Um, we need to identify how we got to where we're at. We have to then stop feeding the thing that causes us to get there and feed the spirit so we can be strong whenever the flesh decides to come up and bring us to that place where our flesh wants to be. Um, so whenever I started, when I, when I was able to figure out the what got me to where I was at, it should have just been cool. I'm, I'm now, I know where I was at. I know how I got there. I know what I need to do to fix it. And everything was gravy, right? Like everything, you know, just worked itself out. No, it didn't. Um, I knew what I needed to do to change. I knew what I needed to stop becoming. I need to stop doing. And I know what I need to do to become better. The fact is, though, it wasn't as easy as just identifying you had to walk it out. So when it came to trying to get back in shape, um, I was I was starting to do um, I started to change my diet. I stopped eating all the junk. I stopped drinking all the junk, and I started working out. I started walking every day, um, or I tried to walk every day. I had some really good days. Um, I had some days where I like I'm rocking and rolling. I almost felt like I could see the shadow in front of me shrinking. You know, I started feeling better. Um, I felt like I started looking better. But then there were those days um, that were not so so good. Um, there were those days where, man, I would start off in the morning and automatically I'd either have a headache or I would be maybe depressed or something would happen and cause me just to go, oh, whatever. And I'd want to throw the whole day away of, of, of eating healthy and working out. And I feel like sometimes we, we get to that point spiritually as well to where Sometimes if, if it doesn't go the way that we feel like it needs to be or that we want it to be, that we tend to, we just have those good days and bad days. I feel like we're always doing this sometimes in our spiritual walk when in reality to become healthy, it should be this constant here. Um, so what I did uh, when, when, whenever I started realizing that the battle now was me needing to do what I knew I needed to do, um, I did something really kind of funny, but it, it worked. Um, I got a pic I took a picture of myself, or I called my fat picture. No one's ever going to see it, I pray to God. Uh, and I put that on my computer, and then I found a picture of somebody who was in shape that I thought, man, I might could look like that one day. And I had those that I would bring out in front of me. Every time I'd have a bad day, or I'd feel like I didn't want to go out and walk, or go out and work out, or even eat healthy, and I would bring up these these images of where I was at and where I wanted to be. And what that did is that allowed me to focus not only my eyes on what I needed to focus on to keep me focused, but it would keep me from growing weary and tired and down. It kept me driven. So this brings me to the second point I want to say is be careful where you fix your eyes. So like I said, I, I, I came up with something that kind of helped me go, remind me of who I was and or maybe who I am right now that I want to change and where I am going. And that gave me some motivation and focus. Um, I think we have to be very careful. I do. I believe we have to be very careful where we fix our eyes. And and I could, uh, there's a scripture that I want to read real quick. Um, it's in Hebrews, Hebrews 12. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that is so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, 
scorning its shame, and set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So it says right there in, the, in, in Hebrews 12 where it says, verse 2, it says, fixing your eyes on Jesus. Okay. I had to have something I fixed my eyes on for my, my healthy Aaron to, that, that helped me stay focused on the goal at hand. It helped keep all of, even when I felt bad and felt depressed and felt hungry or felt tired, it kept me focused on the goal at hand. And what we need to do in our spiritual life, because I'll be honest with you, just like getting our physical body in shape, sometimes getting our spiritual body, our, our, our spirit in a place where it needs to be, sometimes, our, 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 I'm going to tell you right now, our flesh is going to fight it. Because again, we're going to be starving our flesh and feeding our spirit. There's going to be times where we're going to have a battle. And what we have to do is we have to fix our eyes on Christ. If we fix our eyes on Christ, it will enable us to continue to walk the way that, that God calls us to walk to become a healthy son and daughter of Christ. Um, let's take a look real quick at Peter, okay? Um, I'm going to read the scripture and we'll talk real quick about Peter. And I promise you we're going to wrap it up. Um it's in Matthew 14, verse 25. It says, Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, G immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when he climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So I read that, and the one thing I noticed you know, I try to picture what it would what it would be like uh, in that situation. And the one thing that really stuck out to me in this was that Peter saw Christ, and he's he he sees Christ coming towards him, and he says, "Call me out onto the water." He says, "Come on!" And so he gets out of the water, he starts walking. His eyes are fixed on Christ, and he starts walking towards Christ. Now let's take a look at what happened when he did this. He turned his head. Okay. He just quickly turned his head. It says here that in verse 31 that there was doubt. Okay. It says immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and said, you have little faith. He said, why did you doubt? The thing that I, that, that, that really though, that, that makes me go before the doubt happened, he did the one thing that I feel like we need to be very cautious about. We need to be very poignant about is he turned his head off of Christ. He took his gaze he took the, the fixed connection between him and Christ where he's walking out, walking on water, and he turned his head. And when he turned his head, he saw the waves. He saw the, 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 the storm. And then doubt came in. So I look at that and go, well, I don't want to doubt. So how can I fight this doubt? How can I fight even the temptation of doubting? Let's not turn our head. Let's keep our eyes fixed on Christ. I believe if we can keep our, our head straight, our eyes fixed on Christ, we won't even have to, like, there will be a sea around us, and yet we won't fall, we won't slip, because our eyes will be fixed on Christ. We won't have to deal with doubt, because we're not looking left and right, we're looking straight at Jesus. Um, there's a saying that, was, that I say a lot to some of the people around me that they probably get annoyed about. Um, it's this, every moment of every second of every day, we can walk with him, walk with our eyes fixed on him in constant communication with Jesus, with our father. I believe as believers, we are called to always stay. I mean, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Um, 
the Bible says also, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first. It isn't, uh, you know, I hear seek first. The scripture says it right here. Um, so don't, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek first. So let me, let me give you an example of what I, I, my typical day, um, or my healthy, <laughs> healthy typical day is because I still struggle at times. Um, when we wake up, our eyes are fixed on him. I'm talking to the father. I'm saying, God, thank you. Thank you, God, that you gave me another day. This is the day that you made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And then when I wake up and I start my day, I start thanking him. When I, when I'm out in traffic headed to whether it's a job or headed to the church, I, I'm thanking him for the things that he's provided for me. I'm thanking him for, for where he's brought me from and to where he's bringing me to. When I'm in conversations with people, I'm thanking God and I'm lifting people up in prayer maybe, or I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking God, what are your thoughts on this or that? If I've noticed that when I not only start my day, but I continue to keep my eyes on Christ and I keep my eyes on God, my entire day is affected in such a good way to where I feel not only closer uh, I feel more at peace. I'm walking in, in, in love and in joy. I start becoming a healthy Christian. I believe that God has called us to be this. And and some people, I've, I've actually told people this before, and they said, well, what are you talking about? Like every moment of every second of every day. So if you're, if you're you know, mowing the lawn, you're just going to be talking with God? Yes, I'm going to be talking with God. I'm going to be praising God. I'm going to be having him fix in front of me in everything that I do. And it can be, and it is something that when we start learning to walk in everything unto God, through God, for God, our eyes will stay fixed on him. We're not going to sink like Peter did. Our eyes, we're not going to be worried about the waves, the things that could be. We're just going to be going towards him. Um, point three it's the last point. It's more of a warning, okay? So um, something that I have found, especially in this day and age in our American society, um, and as Christians, we go, okay, well, I understand maybe I'm not where I want to be or should be as a Christian. Maybe I, I've, I've found myself to where, man, uh, I've been at a better place. I've been um, uh, closer to God. Right. Now, let me say something real quick. God is always right here. It's us who who ebbs and flows towards him. But let's say even even within my, my personal walk, I've been closer with God at previous times. And, and I, I see myself struggling in an area or areas or sin or depression. And I want to get closer to God. I want to be a healthy a spirit, have a healthy spiritual life, I be a healthy Christian. I want to get closer to God. Um, so we we look at our life and go, okay, well, let's address the sin. Let's address the thing. That's great. Um, we ha And that's good. That's what we're talking about is addressing and then keeping our eyes fixed. But we have to be careful. And again, this is point three is a warning. And here's point three. I'll get back to it. Okay. Just because it might not be a sin does not make it okay. And I feel like when I say this, I might be stepping on people's toes because this is, I think, a key for me in my success every day in my walk towards Christ and with Christ. Um, Peter, all he had to do was turn his head, right? We need to be cautious and careful for the things that cause us to turn our head to keep our eyes off of Christ. And if it's something that we're doing and we can't do it with Christ, unto Christ, for Christ. Um, I think we need to be very, very careful because even though it might not be a sin, it can lead to sin. It can lead to destruction. Um, so what's an example? Okay. See, this is where I try to, to make sure, please know my heart. I'm not a legalistic person. I'm far from it. I've seen legalism where you have to be a certain cookie cutter mold of a Christian and biblical. And if you're not that, then you're not a Christian or something like that, something ridiculous. But 
something in my life. There was a there was a, a few years back. God really wrecked me. Um, we're 20 minutes in. I promise I'm wrapping up right here. God really wrecked me in a good way, and He started pouring His His love into me to the point of where it was just overflowing. And I was going, God, I need you. I need you in every aspect of my life. And so I started keeping my eyes fixed on Him. Okay, I started. I, I, he started showing me the things that. I, I had in my life that was causing me to be hindered and affected in a negative way. And so I started handing things to God. I started saying, God, you're a good father. You want to help me in this. I, I give this to you. I give this to you. Then I started getting a lot of the sin out of my life, a lot of the things that were negative out of my life that were hindering me from having a, a close, intimate relationship with God. And then I realized that I had my God time and then I had my me time where I would just take God and put him on a shelf and be like, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the, this morning and the time we had together. Now I'm going to turn off and just veg out. I'm just going to turn off and just put you here and just do what we do every night. Um, be careful of that. I believe that everything we can do, we can do it with him, with, with God, with Christ. And so there was a time where the shows I would watch, I would realize I'm not watching this with you, God. The music I'm listening to, I'm going, I'm not listening with you, God. The game I'm playing, I was not doing it with you, God. I was not even acknowledging you in any of it. So my head, I noticed, started turning when that happened. Because I put God on the shelf, Christ on the shelf, and I would turn my head towards other things. And I realized that those sometimes were the things that would cause me to the next step or bring me to the next step that would be my next stumble or my next fall. Does it mean that those things are bad? No. Does it mean that you can't do that? No. But what I'm saying is, if we keep our eyes fixed on Christ and we do the things in this world with Christ, unto Christ, for Christ, um, we're going to be able to walk on the water towards Christ. Amazing things happen. Our spiritual life will be a healthy life. Um, God's a good God. He's a good Father. No matter where you're at right now, no matter whether you feel like you are, um, you might be depressed. You might be dealing with sin. You might be just in a place of, of dry, like a dry place. Um, God's a good father. He, he, he is such a good father. He says, cast all of your cares on me because I care for you. And he wants to bring you close. Uh, I'm going to say a quick prayer. Um, and we're going to go ahead and um, call it a night. Um, if there's something in this, in this conversation that you go, man, I, I do realize that I've gotten to a place where I don't want to be. Maybe, maybe, like I said, it, maybe it's a sin or maybe it's depression. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's, uh, just being, dealing with life. God wants you to just raise your arms up to him and just run with him with everything you have. And he's a good father. He runs straight at you. Um, if you're at a place like that, we're going to we're going to submit this to God and God's going to help not only show us, he's going to take those things away that are hindering us. He's going to show us how we can not go back to that. He can show us the things in our life, maybe in our past, the food that we're eating or the thing that we're feeding. And he'll show us how we can remove that so that we can become healthy. He'll show us how we need to feed our spirit so that we can continue on our race. All we have to do is keep our eyes fixed on Christ. Everything we do, our eyes fixed on Christ. So let's say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father God, you are such a good father, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in our church, what you're doing in our life, God. You have a desire to be even closer to us, God, and I thank you, Lord. God, right now, you know where everybody is at. You know where I'm at, Lord, and right now, we submit to you our struggles. We submit to you our fears, our pain, our hurt, God, maybe, maybe sin, Lord. We submit this to you and say, Father, show us how we got there, God. Show us how we can get out of, God. Take the thing away that is hindering us, Lord, and help us to be strong and steadfast, God. Show us how we can walk with you every moment of every second of every day. I speak life in the name of Jesus. God, you are a good God, and we come to you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
I love every single one of you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on Sunday, and I hope you have a blessed night.